Hello and welcome. My name is Evan and today I'm going to be explaining COVID positivity rates in five minutes or less. And in order to do so, we need to take a look at fractions. But don't worry, this won't be painful. On any given day, the COVID positivity rate is the number of people that test positive divided by the total number of tests on that day. One thing we all want to know is how much COVID-19 is spreading in our communities. And in Manitoba, for example, in order to know that exactly, we would need to test all 1.4 million Manitobans every single day, and then we could track the number of new cases each day. But even though knowing the amount of community spread is incredibly important, the first priority of COVID testing is only to let people know when they've contracted the disease, so that those people can take appropriate health safety precautions. And so if we want to know how much COVID is spreading in our communities, according to that test positivity rate, we need to ask two important questions about its denominator. That denominator is our test group. And the first question we can ask is, who is allowed into the denominator? In other words, how hard do we have to look to find a positive case? And second, how large is the denominator? In other words, how many people do we have to test before we find a positive case? So let's apply these questions to two different testing scenarios. First, a scenario where we have a lot of tests and very few restrictions on who can get tested. In that scenario, the denominator includes anyone that wants to get tested, including those people that very likely won't test positive for COVID-19. But question number two asks how big that denominator is. And in this scenario, the denominator is very large. Because the denominator is so large, you're going to catch almost every single positive case through your testing alone, but you can also somewhat accurately predict the true level of community spread taking place in the community. If you combine this strategy with really aggressive contact tracing, you're going to mop up almost every single COVID case that you missed with the initial testing. And that combination makes this strategy, this scenario, really effective at stamping out COVID. The next scenario is what we have in Canada, and that's where we have fewer tests with more restrictions. In this scenario, the denominator is biased toward having positive outcomes, and that means we need to take a careful look at the second question, the size of the denominator, to understand what's happening in the community. So because the denominator is small, we know that we can't rely on it to tell us exactly how much community spread is taking place on any given day but we can use it to identify patterns in the community. Let's say, for example, you want to know whether or not coins are balanced. So you take a toonie and you flip it twice on day one. Well, even if it flips heads both times on that first day, you and I both know that we can't make an assumption about the balance of all toonies everywhere. However, if you flip a different toonie every day for two months, and every single time they seem to flip up heads, well, that might give you an indication that some number of toonies out there are actually imbalanced. And although an imbalanced number of toonies out there probably isn't a big deal, unknown COVID spread is. So if our testing is low and limited to people that think they have COVID-19, and we turn up a consistently high percentage of positive cases, we know that there is probably another unknown group of positive cases out there that we're not catching. In other words, Consistently high positivity in a low testing scenario tells us that community spread is taking place. And if we don't have aggressive enough contact tracing in that scenario, we're likely to miss a lot of positive cases. So to put it all together, what percentage should we try to stay below? Well, the Center for Disease Control, World Health Organization, and Canadian health officials all recommend staying below 5% test positivity and ideally keeping things below 2.5%. So given that knowledge and what you've learned so far in this video, go check out what's happening in your local community. And I really hope you like what you see. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to share it with a friend. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. As always, stay safe and take care. I'll see you next time.